When I embraced minimalism, I got rid of a lot of stuff. Minimalism is a way to live with more intention. By eliminating distractions and getting rid of life's excess, you can focus on things that are truly important. So you can find happiness, fulfillment and freedom. In that sense, less is more. I've been a minimalist for a while now and I thought I'd share a list of 5 things I no longer own as a minimalist to hopefully inspire you on your minimalist journey. A TV takes up a lot of space and with the way my apartment is set up there's no obvious way to put a TV stand. I could move the couch in the middle and then put the TV there against the wall but it would really break up the space and I actually like how spacious the living room is right now. And more importantly when there's a TV in the living room, I watch more TV. Fumio Sasaki calls this the silent to-do list. I've spoken about this on the channel before. And with regards to a TV, what it means is that it, it takes on a personality. It wants to be watched. You know, it's sending these messages to me like, oh, something may have happened in the world. Let's check the news. Or you haven't watched the latest season of Better Call Saul yet, which by the way, is an amazing show. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely watch it. But I find having a TV in the living space, it's just such a time suck. I remember, and this predates me becoming a minimalist, many years ago, I lived with roommates and we shared this living room and had this huge TV. You know, this was before you had flat screens, it's like this really big bulky thing. And this one night, I'm at home with one of my other roommates and you know, we're watching something, but there's really nothing on TV. And I happen to have the remote control so I'm just flipping through its channels and I think we had about 30 channels. I flipped through all 30 channels three times. There was nothing interesting on, on any of the channels. So I was like, you know what? We don't have to watch TV. So I just turned it off. And then my roommate who was like dozing half asleep on the couch, he woke up and was like, oh, that's not necessary. Like, give me the remote control. So he turned it back on and we ended up on, I think it was Discovery Channel or National Geographic, this show on these crab fishes in, the, I don't know, the Arctic somewhere. And that was the moment I thought to myself, man, I need my own space. I am so done. Like at that time I was watching way more TV than I am right now. But even then I didn't want to watch TV every single like free moment of my time. And it's not like I never watch TV anymore. Like I watch Netflix on my laptop or movies. But it's not my default option in my leisure time. I also like to read books. I like to listen to podcasts, a puzzle maybe even. I like to cook. It's just nice to have these different options instead of always defaulting to watching TV. Benjamin Hardy in his book Willpower Doesn't Work wrote, if you don't shape your environment, it will shape you. I know that if I have a TV in my living room, I will definitely watch more TV. I'm not saying this is a forever decision. I may buy a projector in the future, for example. But right now, this is what works for me. Cars cost money. If you buy a new car, the moment you drive out the dealership, you lose 20% of its value. And even if you buy a secondhand car, that's still a serious expense. And on top of that, you got your gas, you got your maintenance, and you're in European cities, you need a parking permit. And if you don't have that, like there's, there are a lot of parking fees. It just really adds up. I used to own a black Volkswagen Golf GTI. I bought it secondhand somewhere in the countryside. And I remember picking it up thinking, oh my God, what am I buying? I, I remember it didn't even start initially. I should have just walked right then and there, but you know, I really wanted this car and I made it all that way. So. We got it to work and I drove back home, but it had these black tinted glasses. Like from the outside, you couldn't really look inside. And even when you were driving, I could hardly see what's going on, especially at night. So I definitely intended to take off these tinted glasses as soon as possible. But I picked it up on Saturday afternoon and the next morning, I was playing soccer at the time and we always played Sunday morning. So I volunteered to pick up two of my teammates to drive to the game. Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m., peaceful supper, Everybody still was asleep, nobody on the road. What can go wrong? But all of a sudden this police car shows up behind us, signaling me to move over. They flagged me because I had these black tinted glasses. And my two, two roommates in the back, they were like cracking up. Like they couldn't believe it. Within 24 hours, I got pulled over by the cops. I mean, it was pretty funny. And luckily they went easy on me because I still had the receipt and everything like right there in the dashboard. So I showed them, listen, it's not my fault. Like I bought it this way. I literally bought it yesterday. I still have to register and everything. I am gonna get rid of this like as soon as possible. Don't worry, I know I'm in the wrong here. So 
Luckily, they didn't have a device where they could measure like how dark it actually was. So they couldn't give me a fine. And yeah, I, I got rid of these tinted glasses very uh, quickly. So I drove the car for a couple of years, but it cost me a lot of money. It had all kinds of maintenance issues. And unfortunately, I had an accident one day which totaled the car. And that's the last time I owned a car. I did move to Thailand uh, not too long after and I had a scooter, which I really loved. I drove it everywhere. I must have driven like 50,000 kilometers on there. It's crazy when you think of it on a scooter. But yeah, not a car. And now that I'm back in Europe, I can get by with alternative means of transport. When I'm in cities, I can take the subway, the bus, you know, any public transport, Ubers, taxis. And I like to walk. Where I live right now, I can go anywhere by foot. So only when I really need a car, I will rent one. Years ago, I went to London in the UK for the first time. Now, I'd never been to London. It was super cool, but this was also the first time I went on a holiday on my own. So I was a bit lonely. I was playing a lot of online poker at the time. So I found this poker tournament in a casino not too far from the hotel where I was staying. It was 50 pounds. And as luck would have it, and it was definitely more luck than skill, I ended up making it to the final table and then even heads up and then we cut a deal and I turned my 50 pounds into a thousand pounds on my first night. And I was like, this is crazy. This is great. This pays for my whole trip. But then the next day I was like, wait a minute. I already saved up money for this trip. I can use this money on something else. So clearly I wasn't a minimalist. I was already thinking about how I could spend this new money that had just dropped in my lap. In London, there's this street it's called Denmark Street and it has a lot of history. A lot of famous bands recorded their albums there in the past in the 60s. I think the Rolling Stones even uh, did that. When I was there, and this is 10 years ago, it was full of guitar shops. Now, I'm left-handed and as a guitar player, that really sucks. If you go to a guitar shop, they may have 500 guitars and 10 maybe for lefties. And they probably all suck. Like they don't have the fancy ones there. So in London, being in Denmark Street with all these guitar shops that I could just walk into, it was like I was in heaven. And I came across this really cool second hand Gibson Les Paul 2008 standard. I think it was 1200 pounds, maybe a little bit more. And I bought it because I just won a bunch of money with poker. So. I'm back home, now I have this electric guitar. To play an electric guitar, you need an amp. I didn't have an amp, I only had an acoustic guitar before. So then off I went to a guitar shop, spent 400 euros on an amp. Now I have this big amp, but I couldn't really play it because I just lived, I lived in this apartment. And even when I put it on one, like if you've seen Spinal Tap, Spinal Tap has this famous scene where this amp goes to 11. The numbers all go to 11. Well, I was scared to even go to one in my apartment and, you know, annoy my neighbors. So in the end, I almost never played it. It's just one of those stupid purchases I made in the past. I mean, it was an amazing guitar, but I wasn't playing in a band. I wasn't playing much at all, to be honest, even at home. When I quit my job to travel to Southeast Asia, I finally sold it. I used to have a lot of branded clothes. I started in high school. I remember having this phase where I was really into surfing clothes. And it's weird because I never served a day in my life, but I wore shirts by Simmer Style, Quicksilver, Body Glove. I even had my books wrapped in this Body Glove cover paper, which was a common practice to protect those books. When I got my first corporate job, I switched to a more smart casual look. I got the Hugo Boss jeans, I got the Tommy Hilfiger soft wooden pullovers, the polos by Ralph Lauren and Lacoste. And I remember the Ralph Lauren polos, like I didn't like them so much. They were longer in the back than in the front. I looked it up, it's called a tennis tail. It literally feels a bit like a tail. It's supposed to make sure that your shirt doesn't go out of your trousers. I never tucked it in there to begin with. So to me, it just looked dumb. And I spent so much money on these shirts. After I quit my job to travel through Southeast Asia, the first thing I stopped spending money on was branded clothes. I was backpacking and I was on a budget. And if I did buy shirts, I would just buy cheap ones. They had these fake Ralph Lauren shirts and I actually liked them better than the real deal because they didn't have that tennis tail. Now that I'm back in Europe, I no longer buy branded clothes anymore. I'm totally fine with just simple plain looking white, gray or black shirts. Same for my jumpers. I mean, there's nothing on here. And I got a few pair of jeans. That's about it. When I reflect on why I bought these branded clothes back in the day, I think a lot of it has to do with status and insecurity. 
Like I felt more confident when I could feed off that brand that I was wearing. And if I was wearing plain looking clothes like this jumper that I'm wearing right now, I would feel like nothing special. Thanks to minimalism, I did a 180 on that. By removing clutter, I can see with more clarity what's important to me. And I can be more intentional about what I spend my money on. Now, of course, I like to look good, but that doesn't have to be in branded clothes. I can totally look good in plain looking clothes too. And it's liberating knowing that my confidence, my sense of well-being doesn't depend on something external, on something that I have to spend a lot of money on. It's something that comes from within. And I feel good because I am intentional about the choices that I make, which is totally different than how I lived in the past. I'm a foodie. I love eating well. I'm a big fan of Chef's Table and similar shows. And I really like cookbooks. The pictures are always stunning. I just wish I could stick my hand in there and take out that dish and eat it right away. And if it's a cookbook by a famous chef, buying that cookbook and then having it in my kitchen and reading through it and maybe even making one of the recipes in there, it makes me feel that maybe one day I could even be the sous chef of this famous chef. Back in the day, one of my favorite things to do was to go to a bookstore and check out the new cookbooks. I could spend hours there. And more often than not, I would come home with one or two new books. But the thing is, cookbooks are heavy. I would stack them on the shelf in my kitchen. And one day I came home and the shelf had collapsed under the weight of all the cookbooks on there. It was such a big mess. There's a big pile of cookbooks on the floor. There's broken glass, olive oil, like dripping on the pages. It was nasty. And on top of that, I hardly ever cooked from those cookbooks. I liked the picture they painted, the dream that they sold, but I didn't have the energy or the time to actually pursue that dream. In reality, like I would often just get takeout or I would make something simple with the ingredients that I had in my fridge. I guess I liked those cookbooks more for the feeling I got when I flipped through the pages than that I really wanted to master all the recipes in there. Now I don't have any cookbooks anymore. I donated all of them. If I want to make a dish, I'll just see what ingredients I have at home, in the fridge or in the pantry, and I'll cook something up or go to the supermarket after I've found a recipe online and get what I need. That's it. I do, out of nostalgia, still sometimes go to a bookstore to just check out the cookbooks, but no more impulse buy. I can get my fix by just flipping through the pages in the store. So I no longer own a car, a TV, branded clothes, an electric guitar, and cookbooks. But there are things I still spend money on. And I made a video about that called 9 things I still own as a minimalist. You can watch it right here. I hope to see you in that video and take care. Bye.